Welcome back. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso on SABC3. And of course, whenever you hear that tune, you know that it's time for us to get all cute, get all parental. It's baby talk time. Now, although you hope you'll never use cardiopulmonary resuscitation or CPR for a child or an infant, it is important to know the steps so that you can help in the event of a cardiac or breathing emergency. Now, to show us how to perform CPR on an infant is Vanessa Pickford, professional nurse, mum, and director of the Safe Med Training Center, which offers the Safe to Grow Infant and Child CPR and First Aid courses. And thanks for joining us this morning. It's, it's so good to have you here. And we're talking about a very important subject that I don't think a lot of parents initially think about. But you know, when you kind of imagine all of the emergencies that, 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 that could occur uh, and the drastic situations that, that could force you into uh, having to know how to perform CPR, mm -hmm. this is a pivotal, pivotal uh, conversation. But just to break it down to the basics, why would you say, wh why would a baby need CPR? I know it's a very self-explanatory question, but just from a medical point of view. Certainly. Well, Katleja, the large majority of babies are born with strong, fit, healthy hearts. So something has occurred which interrupts the ab baby's ability to breathe and therefore oxygenate, which ultimately results in them their hearts stop beating. So that could be a variety of reasons. Anything that ultimately prevents the baby from breathing. Mm -hmm. It could be drowning, choking or aspiration, smothering, suffocation, um, the, the um, a severe allergic reaction. Mm -hmm. So basically anything that causes the baby to stop breathing yeah. and as a result, the heart stops beating. Yeah. And of course, we would love to hear all of your questions. So do engage with us, Expresso Morning Show SABC3 on Facebook if you have any questions uh, regarding CPR and especially in, within the context of infant CPR and baby mm. CPR. Um, when we talk about infant CPR, at, at what age are we talking about? Obviously, from, from the day that a child is born, you need to be able to perform these, but w what exactly are we focusing on? So, absolutely right. An infant is that first year of the baby's life. Mm -hmm. So, we tend to say from the day that they exit their mum's uterus to the time that they blow out the candles on the first birthday mm -hmm. cake. So, that first year of life is infant CPR. Yeah. Uh, we obviously encourage parents to learn the skills whilst the baby is still in utero. Yeah. So, in that antenatal phase, so that on the day that they are able to take their baby home from hospital, they are already equipped with the skills and knowledge to perform yeah. CPR. Yeah. Some viewers out there might be watching and thinking if an emergency should occur at home, uh, would it not be better to get straight into the car, get to the nearest medical mm. facility or maybe even call uh, an emergency line and wait for the paramedics to arrive yes. instead of trying to perform CPR on your own? What would your, your thoughts be on that? CPR is life-saving. The reality is that when your heart stops beating and you stop breathing, you need to be able to re-establish re oxygenation and circulation quickly in order to prevent irreversible brain damage and death. Yeah. You have 10 golden minutes in which to do so. 10 minutes? 10 minutes. So by the end of 10 minutes, most often the baby is brain dead and unable to be resuscitated. <sighs> so if the parents are going to wait for the ambulance to arrive, or potentially put the baby in the car and take a to skill to drive to the hospital, by the time they get there, or by the time the ambulance arrives, the baby is unable to be resuscitated. So we encourage all parents to know how to give effective chest compressions and breaths for the baby whilst waiting for the ambulance to arrive. Yeah. That is the baby's best possible chance of survival. Yeah. Now, you're at home and mm. you can immediately sense that something is going wrong. Uh, when do you know this is the time to start mm. CPR? Mm. Well, we teach the parents a particular assessment or check which would establish whether or not the baby requires CPR. Essentially, that baby needs to be unresponsive, so they cannot wake the baby up, there are no obvious signs of life, and the baby is not breathing. So with those two checks, you would then start your chest compressions and your breaths. Mm. I know in the movies, they always show people frittling around trying to find a pulse. But the reality is that when your adrenaline is pumping and you get a little tremor in your hand and your circulation is pumping harder and faster, it is going to be very, very difficult for you to establish whether or not the baby has a pulse. Yeah. So we do not do a pulse check. It is exclusively, is the baby responding and is the baby breathing? Yeah. Oh, wonderful insights and thank you for joining us this morning. We really do appreciate it. And of course, we'd love to hear from you on our Expresso Morning Show SABC3 Facebook page. Ask us any questions that you have in relation to CPR, especially infant uh, CPR. We'll be joined a little bit later on by two moms uh, as well as our expert guest here to further discuss this topic. It's my feel good breakfast show.
Welcome back. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's a Thursday morning. Hopefully those giggles have put a smile on your face as we prepare for another uh, baby talk right now where we are learning something very, very important, something that all parents and future parents um, should be learning about. We're talking about uh, infant CPR. And we're joined this morning by Deslin, uh, who is now five months pregnant, mommy-to-be, awaiting a little boy. Yes, very excited. She's possibly going to name him Katla. We don't know. <laughs> High five for that, Vanessa. Yes, get in here. High five. Uh, and then also... Uh, Leanne is here, uh, mom to six, six week old uh, Ava, yes. who is okay. here and has just had us all. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all blushing. And uh, I don't know about uh, you, moms, but have you learned about uh, infant CPR yet? Yes, I did a course a few years ago. Okay. Um, but yeah, I haven't brushed up in a while. All so. right. And what, what about you, Dis? I also did a first aid course at work. Uh -huh. Also a while ago. So yeah. it'll be good to just to brush up a bit. This is my absolute first time and then something that I'm just, I should have done it, but I'm glad to be doing it now, rather late than never. Indeed. Um, okay. Let's quickly talk about what we're going to be uh, practicing here, which is infant CPR. When you think CPR, you think chest compressions. Quite right. That is by far and large the most important aspect of CPR, because after all, if there's no circulation, that oxygen's not going to be carried to the brain. Yeah. So the chest compressions are the most important. However, before we start those, we need to establish that the baby is unresponsive and not not breathing. As you said, the check. Quite right. And uh, w when one thinks about chest compressions, and at least what I've heard is that you you kind of have to be very firm about it, especially when you're doing it on, on, on adults, And but there's a, a risk of, of hurting the person um, when you're doing it. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there any such risk when, you, when you're performing CPR on a baby and chest compressions that you might hurt them? Mm -hmm. Look, the reality is that chest compressions need to be performed hard and fast, whether it be an adult, a child, or an infant. Yeah, yeah. So yes, there is a degree of risk that there might be some rib breakages, mm -hmm. but the reality is that you can live with a broken rib, you cannot live with a heart that's not beating. This is very true. All right. Well, let's get into it uh, and take us through the demonstration as you would during uh, your classes. All right. Uh, so that we can learn how to do this. Super. Pay attention, take notes, record okay. this, so you can play it over and over again. Okay. All right. So as we are practicing now on the raised surface, this is the ideal for doing CPR in an infant. Raced. It, however, needs to be firm. It cannot be cushioned in any way. So if it's the couch, the back seat of a car, the bed, the change mat, those are unsuitable because when you push down on the front, it gives way at the back. So a firm, flat surface like this. Once we have established that there is no response from the infant, that is the point at which we'll raise it to the firm, flat surface. Mm -hmm. So our first action should actually be, upon approaching the infant, making sure that we are safe to give assistance and there's no risk to ourselves or the infant. So, for example, in an accident situation, mm -hmm. we will come up to the baby and we will check for a level of response. We do that by tapping the feet. It encourages a gasp reflex in the infant and they tend to frog their legs up next to, next to the body. Mm -hmm. So we go, Bubs, are you OK? Come on, everyone, you can do All that. Right. Yeah. Okay. Baby, are you okay? Right. Are you okay? So, so you've, you've got to be you pretty firm about that as well. Firmly slap the baby's feet. Baby? Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's no response in the infant. There are no signs of life, no facial twitches, no movements, no cries. At that point, I'm then going to say, right, help, 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 and call an emergency number to get help coming. Yeah. So if that is you making the call yourself, you're going to have to take out your cell phone, dial the number and put it on speaker next yes, to you so that yes. you can talk to the dispatcher whilst you continue with the CPR. Mm -hmm. Thereafter, you're going to check for breathing. Now, my preference is not to do it from a distance, but to get right down, looking down towards the chest, feeling, listening, and counting to 10. Give yourself a good 10 seconds to check for breathing. Hold your own breath whilst you're doing so, that you, so that you don't mistake who is breathing. So I'd get right down in this manner, looking for chest rise, feeling, listening, is there any breathing from the infant? Hold your own breath whilst you're doing so. Mm -hmm. So let's start from the top. We're going to go right. It's safe for me to assist. Babe, are you OK? Calling for help and checking breathing. Let's do it together. All right. Okay. So we're going to go. It's safe. It's safe, safe to it's assist. Safe, yeah. it's safe distance. Okay. Tap the baby's feet. Baby, Babe, are you are OK? okay? okay. No, response. no response. Call for help. Call for help. What out your cell phone. Speaker. Quite right. I'm alone. Now okay. check for breathing. Get right down over the baby's nose and mouth, looking breath. down towards the chest whilst you're doing so. There we go. Give it a good 10 seconds holding your own breath whilst you're doing so. That's brilliant. Okay. Now, once we have established that the baby is not <laughs> breathing 
and is not responding, we're then going to bear the chest in order to start our chest compressions. So we will literally whip open the baby's um, little baby grow, whatever clothes they're wearing, you can do so. To expose the chest. To expose the chest so that you can see the nipple line. The nipple line is the landmark which allows you to know where to put your fingers on the baby's chest. So just a, a quick mm. note, in a case like this where, let's say, your baby is wearing more than one layer, it is important for you to absolutely expose the chest. 100%. You okay. need to be able to visibly see where is the nipple line on the baby. Now, my baby, unfortunately, I can't take these clothes off because then their lungs fall out. <laughs> That's not going to happen to your baby. <laughs> so this baby has got little nipple prominences. Yes. So we are going to use those as our landmark. Now, when we give our chest compressions, we are going to put only two fingers on the center of the baby's chest, on the sternal bone, which is the breastbone running down from the na nape of the neck down to the xiphoid process, which is the point at which your ribs, your ribs meet. Come together. So we're going to put our fingers just below the nipple line. The two fingers are going to run side by side down the chest, and then you will push down to a depth of four centimeters which is hard. Yeah, it's about a third right. of the yeah. depth of the chest of an infant and at a rate of 100 to 120 compressions per minute. Now, because the baby's neck is so short, if we hold the baby's head into slightly open, into the open airway position, we can actually facilitate some air exchange whilst we are doing the chest compressions. So, ladies and Katlejo, what I would like you to do now is feel for those nipples, right? Mm -hmm. Put two fingers on the center of the baby's chest, just below the nipple line. I want the tips of the fingers onto the breastbone, please. Right, perfect. And put your other hand on the baby's head to tip it ever so slightly into the open airway position. Okay. We are now going to give 30 chest compressions. You are going to count out loud with me whilst we do so. I'm going to establish a rhythm for you, and you're going to push hard to a depth of four centimeters, a rate of 100 to 120 compressions And this is without breathing into the baby's you mouth? You are not going to breathe. We are only doing the chest compressions. Okay. Remember, when we push down on the front, we are squeezing the heart between the sternum in the front and the vertebrae at the back. So we are forcing any blood that's within the heart out into the body, creating circulation. Mm -hmm. You need to allow your fingers to come back up to its natural position and the chest to recoil between compressions, which allows the heart to refill before you push down on it again. So we are essentially pumping the heart like this. Mm -hmm. So let's go. Everyone ready? Yeah. And one, one two, two, three, three four, four, five, six, six seven, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Well done. So that is how you perform chest compressions on an infant. Yeah. If it is not your baby. I don't want you to take the risk upon yourself to give breaths. You will only push on the chest exclusively until such time as help arrives. If the mom or the dad or the caregiver of the baby is present, you can say to them after your 30 compressions, right, you are now going to give two breaths, which is what we are going to do next. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, okay, so this is a very involved yeah. process. I'm so invested in it, but it, it just kind of makes the reality of it dawn on you uh, what, what could happen and how alert you need to be, all the checks you need to be aware of. And I'm hoping that uh, for you mums, this is making you feel very empowered, very yes. enlightened once again as you brush up on those skills, right? <clears throat> Mm. Fantastic. Vanessa, thank you very much. All right. Yeah. Can we keep going? Yes, please. Right. You're about to show us how to so give the breath. When we give the breath to the <sighs> infant, which is two breaths after every 30 compressions, you're going to put your mouth of the, over the nose and the mouth of the baby. Okay. Tilting the airway ever so slightly back and giving a little puff of breath. Remember, your lungs are a great deal larger than that of your baby's. Yes. So you're not going to go oh, into the baby. Yeah. It's just a puff. The moment you see the chest rise, you will stop because that is the visible indication that your breath has been effective. So I would like you to practice now. You're going to hold the head back. You're going to put your mouth over the nose and mouth and give a little puff of breath. It's absolutely clean. You can oh, okay. All right, you can do it like that. <laughs> okay. Good, well done. And again. Excellent. Oh, wow. Well done to see the chest rise in the infant. And then 30 compressions And 30 follow. compressions. So let's put that sequence together. I'm going to make absolutely sure this one's fine, yeah. Okay. We are going to do 30 compressions followed by two breaths. And that would be the CPR sequence that you continue whilst waiting for the ambulance to arrive. Okay. So let's start with the fingers on the chest. We give our yeah. 30 compressions first to create circulation and blood flow. Mm -hmm. And, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. 
open the airway and give you a little puffs of breath. One and two. Excellent. And, and then you would go back to your chest compressions thereafter. And this you do until professional medical help arrives. 100%. Do not stop. The moment you stop. stop, that your chance, child's chances of survival diminish rapidly. Because the moment you start pushing on the chest, your circulation dis yes. disappears. And without any oxygen being introduced into the system, the heart and the brain are going to die. All right. Vanessa Pickford, thank you very, very much. Uh, Leanne uh, Desen, thank you very much for joining us as well. If you'd like more information, please follow Vanessa at SafeMed1 on social media. Um, and do connect with her for vitally crucial information that you need to know as a parent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us.